Welcome back to it. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso live right here on SABC3. Now, this entire month of July, we focus on mental health awareness. And this gives us the opportunity to show our support and our efforts uh, for those who suffer from mental disorders. And one of those disorders is depression. Now, depression is a serious condition that negatively affects how a person feels, behaves, and even the way that they think. In contrast to being said, clinical depression is persistent and often interferes with a person's ability to function in in daily life. Now, last week we spoke about bipolar disorder and yeah. we've decided to take it um, uh, to the next step and chat about depression. Here to help us out unpack and understand depression, please welcome Dr. Mohamed Fadil Williams uh, and later Bevan Reynolds, who have used dance or who has used dance rather as a form of healing for her depression. And they're going to be joining us here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Doctor, welcome. Thank you, Teresa. It's good to have you here. Um, let's start with, I suppose, the, the big question. Um, mm. How would you describe depression? What, what is depression? We, we, it's a term we use very yes, loosely, obviously. Yeah, yes. um, how, wh what is the official yes. um, classification? Well, certainly sadness is a normal part of life, but when does it become clinical depression? Mm. Or the formal diagnosis is major depressive disorder. Mm. And the key issue is that it is a syndrome. So it's not just a low mood, but it's associated with other signs and symptoms, mm. which perhaps we could unpack a bit later. Mm. Yeah. But then also we expect it to last for longer than two weeks. And then also we look at function, which you mentioned. So mm. the person's social or their occupational functioning is affected by this. So mm. those are some of the salient features between the, the differences between normal sadness yeah. and major depressive disorder. Yeah. Now, you mentioned low moods, for example, as, as, as one salient sort of sign of, yes. of depression. What are some of the other signs that sure. we might be able to pick up from someone around us or from ourselves or yes. out of ourselves? So the low mood is the sine qua non, the absolutely essential thing we should see. Mm. Um, it may be a low mood or irritable mood. Sometimes with men, we see they're quite irritable, for instance. Mm. Um, and then, of course, there needs to be a lack of pleasure in things that they used to enjoy. So mm. you used to wake up to watch your show. That was the <laughs> highlight of the day. Thanks for using but that now an example. they're not <laughs> using, doing that anymore. Yeah. A key thing we also look for is suicidality. You know, mm. so many people are depressed, may have thoughts to harm themselves. Some go on to, you know, harm themselves. Mm. Or sometimes, unfortunately, we have completed suicides. Um, the person might harm their families. In South mm. Africa, we see lots of femicide, people turning yeah. the gun on, the, on their families and so on. But mm. those, of course, are the more severe cases. Mm. More commonly, we see um, changes in sleep, changes mm. in appetite, changes in libido. This can mm. cause a massive uh, effect in, in their relationship. Yes. Um, concentration, you know, I'm, I'm nestled in the, uh, in the hub of students in observatory there, so they often come in, they're struggling to study. Mm. Um, and then also there might be profound feelings of guilt and shame. So it's a very, you know, one person separate, yeah. exactly, mm. it's not the same as the other. And mm. you need to treat the person in front of you. Um, and, and it's a person, and I think it's something that we can all relate to because so much of it is situational. I yes. think all of us go through low points. Indeed, yep. And it's, it would seem through, oh, we've learned so much over this month, which kind right. of really brings to bear the power of having one month at least of yes. awareness around this to be able to relate. Yes. Are there particular triggers? Are you always predisposed to being depressed? Is it something that can only be treated with drugs? Or is, is it, can a situation bring about that depression and then you stay in that state of... Kind right. Of so you're mentioning two key words. There's the issue of predisposition, mm. and that one gets from one's genetics. Um, we think that genetics plays a great role in, in many of our patients, you know, up to 40% of them. Mm. Uh, last time I checked, there were over 44 genetic variants of depression. Wow, that's a lot. But then also you have an underlying predisposition, but then you have a life stressor. You know, you have a loss of a loved one, loss of, we've seen lots of people with uh, unemployment in our country, for instance. Um, you know, you might have a medical illness um, like HIV or um, diabetes or mm, thyroidism. Trauma, yeah. So you have some sort of uh, trigger on top of an underlying predisposition. And then this is the triggering of, of, of the depression. Mm. Mm. Dr. Williams, you're, you're not going anywhere. You certainly <laughs> need to be hanging around here. We've got lots and lots of questions to get through and to ask you. And we invite you at home to do the same. Go on our Facebook and let us know if you've got any questions for the good doctor over here. It's Express on Morning Show, SABC3. The conversation around mental health awareness uh, happens and continues throughout the month of July. And we want you to be a part of it. And we'll see you after this. It's my feel-good breakfast show.
Welcome back. As we continue our discussion um, throughout the month of mental health awareness, which I think uh, Tubbs and I can both testify to the fact that it should be an all year round Absolutely. conversation. Absolutely. But we are loving having the platform to engage, to empathize. Mm. Most importantly, we all have in some time in our lives gone through the hard times, gone through those moments which have made us question our own mental health. And depression is something that has so many people caught in the grips right now. I have mm. no doubt that there are people watching right now trying to figure out what is going on in their mind, in their lives, within relationships. Now is an opportunity to learn more. Um, mm. Dr. Williams, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, I think we, we have to dive right in here. We, and this, this is quite terrifying. The depression is twice as common among women as men. Is this, mm. and I, I say this with completely uneducated, is this hormonal? What is what? Well, I think there are many factors, and they're quite interrelated. So you're mentioning the issue of hormonal. We know that um, up to puberty, the rates between b boys and girls are are similar. Mm. But once there's the onset of the menstrual cycle, we see that you, there's 1.7 or roughly two times more common um, in in ladies. So ladies, they'll you know they'll get um, in and around their periods. There's a peri uh, menstrual dysphoric disorder. Seven to eleven percent of ladies they might be, have some depressive symptoms mm. and or anxiety uh, in and around birth, the perinatal period or postpartum immediately after that and then in and around menopause as well and we, we there are some hormones particularly estrogen that's been implicated there's a precipitous fall of, of of the hormones but you know it's it's important to understand that there are other factors as well socioeconomic factors unfortunately in our setting you know our ladies are still very disempowered as a society we need to empower our ladies mm. so there's not a week unfortunately that doesn't go by where I don't hear a lady that's been sexually assaulted okay. or financially abused or emotionally abused and so on mm. I also had a female service and in there you know we see that ladies they often carry the child care um, burden so and especially in South Africa especially yeah. in South especially Africa yeah. And unfortunately, a massive problem we have is that many of our fathers are absent. Mm. And yes, there are some historical underpinnings with, you know, migrant labors, et cetera, in apartheid and so on. Mm. But this is something that we are perpetuating yes. and we need to call it to an end. I really want to make uh, a passionate plea to, you know, my f brothers in mm. South Africa, yeah. please, you know, father your children, mm. be there for them. Be there for the mothers of your children, even if, you know, things between you. Have Maintenance gone so is a well. good starting point, but actually yeah. be present. Be there. Absolutely. <laughs> there. So it's multifactorial. Yeah. Really. Well, we definitely are, are letting our women down in, in many ways, especially yeah. in the country here. But I spend a lot of time, doctor, on social media, and there isn't a day that goes by without seeing at least 10 um, people going on about that they're depressed. Crying for is help. Is it yeah. and crying for help? There's a serious cry for help. Is it that there is so much more depression nowadays than in the past? And why do you think this is the case, if that's the case? Okay, firstly, to say is depression has been around since and, and took, it took it. It's, you know, it's been there <laughs> from the beginning. Uh, but whether it's more common now or not is debatable. The one side of the, you know, of the fence, they feel that, well, we're picking it up more. People mm. are more enlightened. They're more educated. Yes. They know what depression is. And so they access services more readily. In the group, we are talking about the state of the world. You know, there are more wars now than ever before. There are millions of people that are refugees. Mm. Um, in our setting, we've had the army come in now to the Cape Flats because of so much gang violence, for instance. We, we spoke about social media. Yes. That's, the power of that is very, very powerful. In our day, you know, when you were embarrassed at the school, schoolyard um, you you it's just those that were there that you were well, humiliated yeah, for sure. now it goes viral mm. you know it has a massive effect um, and then also screen time there's a lot of literature and research looking at screen time mm. children spending too much time on the screen you know uh, there's been correlations with increased uh, risk of depression it affects their sleep their concentration so there are many different threads to that debate, mm. but um, chronic poverty as well, we mm. know has been robustly linked to decreased mm. um, mental wellness, if you like. Mm. The, the, the butterfly's wow. wings kind of comes into, into effect here because yeah. everyone is affected by what is going on in the world and what happens around us, but I think it really does reinforce how important it is for us to tip those scales back yes. in our favor. And we're starting here in the Western Cape in one of the worstly affected, where I think young girls especially are at most risk. We can do something about it and it starts with a conversation. We can look at ways to get physical, to be able to express yourself, reconnect with your body, your mind, your spirit through something like a dance. In just a moment, we'll welcome another guest to join our discussion. It's my feel good show.
well, the conversation still <laughs> continues here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is the month of July. It's all about uh, shining the spotlight on mental health and really bringing awareness. We love that we're able to be educated in this way and be able to spread all of that knowledge across the many homes that tune in now. And we love that you interact with this information when we put it out. And in fact, we've received some comments on mm. social media on this topic this morning. Yeah, some comments and some questions, which we'll, we'll introduce to our, our panel in just a sec. But um, let's start with Josephine who says, Morning, Doc. Um, what can be used in a herbal form for depression? So maybe something alternative there. Mm. Um, then we have got, um, coming through here, this one, can uh, depression result in chronic or cause a stroke in one's health? Mm. How, basically, how dangerous can depression be physically? Mm. And I suppose that's a, a two-edged sword there. Um, and then Zaid saying, um, has there been a rise in mental health cases? Um, how big is the problem in Cape Town? Well, that we have addressed. There is a massive problem in Cape Town being mm. um, one of the most at-risk communities, certainly uh, in South Africa, probably in the world at the moment. So there has been a rise. Um, but it's uh, some really interesting questions there. So we're yeah. going to um, obviously very quickly welcome our latest guest, um, Bevan Reynolds, um, who is a counsellor teacher um, um, in an alchemist. I love that. I love that. Absolutely love yeah. that term. Um, she likes to dance. Yeah. Um, she, she loves she to moves. move. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, Dr. Dr. Williams. Yeah. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Doc, I'm going to quickly fire off at you, at you one of those first questions. Uh, herbal remedies, yes. uh, you know, obviously being a medical practitioner, how does that slot sure. into your so, mindset? So because of time, I'll just touch on one or two of them. So for herbal remedies, the most commonly and widely used one, I, I would imagine, for depression is St. John's Wort. Yeah. And um, in fact, um, you know, when people are started on antidepressants, we make sure and ask about that because mm. they interact with each other because they both have an effect on serotonin, which is known to be um, uh, um, related to depression. The problem with these herbal remedies, unfortunately, is not standardized in terms yeah, of how much tested. exactly, yeah. how, what's the concentration in a given preparation. Yeah. Um, so, so that's one of the big issues there. You mentioned, you asked about whether depression can have effect on, on one's physical, physical health. Like Certainly, sometimes people come in with a sore back, mm. headaches, migraines, um, you know, chest pain, mm. and then when we unpack it, it's really depression. Um, the but person, can it result in a stroke? So with question. stroke, um, look, uh, people, you know, if, if you become severely depressed enough, you can have what's called conversion symptoms, where you have neurological symptoms, where, which will look exactly like a stroke. Mm. You'll have paralysis, you might have all kinds of neurological problems. So the interplay between the mind and the body is significant, and that's why I'm, I'm very excited to have <laughs> Bevan here as well. So, so that's there. And then the third question about how common it is, there's been a massive local study showing that one in three people in the Western Cape will suffer with a psychiatric illness mm. in, in their lifetime. It's and a lot depression of yeah. is the most common by far. In fact, depression is going to become the most common illness in the world. That's including cancer, HIV, all of them. Mm. It's about to become the most common illness in the world. So I really you. want to thank you for, for this platform yeah. and, 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 and encourage you to continue doing this great work. Yeah. Mm. We have to Once a dig week, yeah. deep into it. It's very, very important. But of course, we've got Bevan Reynolds here. And the reason we've got you, Bevan, is that you are, uh, you, you, you are someone who suffered with depression and mm. you took to dance using the form of dance to really manage and get into it. Um, when did you first find out that you had depression and, and how long ago was this? I first found out in 2009, so that's almost 10 years wow. now. Yeah. And how yeah. did your depression diagnosis come about? What did you do? Uh, I was officially diagnosed when I landed myself in rehab. Yeah, so I actually was at Crescent Clinic in Kenilworth uh, for six weeks and that's when they officially diagnosed me. Yeah. What, because it's, it's such a difficult thing when you're in it, mm. to be able to take that step. What was the tipping point? Was it the people around you? Did yeah. you hit a low that you had never experienced before? What was that thing <laughs> that, that prompted you to be brave enough to, to admit yourself or to be admitted mm. into, was it an intervention? How did you end up in that cycle of, of rehab? It was definitely a, a rock bottom mm. <laughs> experience and um, hmm, getting dry just <laughs> talking about yeah, it. Um, can, everyone can relate. Yeah, <laughs> That's the thing. it was yeah. quite a desperate space mm. and I started looking online for any kind of help that I could possibly think of mm. and I actually, yeah, I was, I spiraled out badly and ended up taking quite a lot of uh, painkillers, like mm. an overdose essentially 
and that landed me in Kenilworth Clinic first and then over to Crescent. So. Yeah. Did you want to die at that stage? Was that the intention or had you just kind of disconnected um, completely? I didn't want to die, I wanted to escape the pain. Yeah. Mm. And I wanted to go to sleep mm. to avoid experiencing <laughs> what just I was experiencing. To yeah. shut yourself out from it. Uh, but you believe that healing comes in many different forms, and that's why you took to dancing this as a form true. of healing. Um, how has dance helped you manage your depression? It's such a huge question because it f works on every aspect of mm. your being. I think we need to look at it holistically. Um, dance doesn't just work the body, it mm. works the psyche, it works the soul. And uh, especially con conscious dance, Sorry, I'm very dry. Uh, no, no, I'm have a little sip. No problem, yeah. Um, mm. So the idea of conscious dance is that it's, it's unstructured, it's mm. free. Mm. So there's no routine, there's nobody telling you what to do. Mm. There's a, just a facilitator who's guiding and encouraging you to move your body in the way that feels most natural and authentic to you. Mm. So it might not even look like dancing. Mm. It could be just stretching, it You're could be pulling, moving, yeah. it could be lying oh, for a moment. Are you it able to show us and give us a bit of a demonstration? <laughs> it's very interesting, it's one thing to hear it. How would, you, how would you guide through that process? Yeah. What would you be saying as, a, as an instructor or, or, or mentor doing. in that space? Yeah. Um, oh, doing, we, so when actually in facilitating, there's DJing involved as well. Oh. We've got a lot of quite epic music. Yeah. We yeah. create a bit of a, a, a journey where the music in the beginning is, is quite low mm. beats per minute. It's mm. got a slow kind of earthy feel, which helps people to get into a kind of more meditative space. Mm. They start to really connect with their body and leave some of the day behind. And, and then we, we kind of build up to almost quite a peak experience where we got really fast vibes going and, we, and we're moving quite vigorously. And then back down into what we call the air or the ether, which mm. is like, a, again, a meditation, which offers, often lands you lying on the floor and you do a bit of breath work. And so it's quite a journey yeah. and an experience. And I think one of the key things is, is or one of the guidelines is to, it's a non-verbal space. Yeah. So we don't, mm. as dancers, we don't talk, mm. but we express ourselves using our body. So you may arrive feeling really stressed out, mm. and can your stress have a dance? Like right now, I'm pretty nervous. So can my nervousness have a, yeah. can I dance that? Can I shake yeah. it? Could you? Can I move it? If I it? played some music for you, <laughs> could you really? <laughs> it depends. Um, yeah, and, and also sometimes the music may not be something that you even like. It may, uh, we have to step out of our preference for different types of music. And sometimes we pushed into kind of uncomfortable spaces where, hey, I don't really don't like this track. I feel frustrated. Can I, can I I give this frustration a movement mm. and and so it's an opportunity to to move use the body to to move it's responding to, to that tension uh, it sounds like you're responding to attention and you are d responding in or, movement or anything and um, wow. someone could come with grief they could come with their sadness mm. they could come with their anger they could come with their road rage their fear whatever like the idea is that we we welcome all of us, mm. all of all parts of ourselves, all feeling. Mm. It, it's not about trying to create a happy experience. It's actually about creating the space yeah. for all experiences so, yeah, to be like there. Mm. Yeah. Well, oh, Bevan, thank you, thank you so much, um, yeah. Doctor. Thank you so much. This has been been massive. It's so cool. Like just feeling the, the energetic shift here, as we just <laughs> even in the last thirty seconds, has been amazing. But I think the most important thing is that if you now can relate to anything that we have said today and this has triggered something within you, you know that you can take that first step and often the first step is just asking someone for help. This number is so important. The South African Depression and Anxiety Group has unbelievable people waiting to talk to you. They know what you are experiencing. 0800-456-789. As much as you think you are alone right now in what you're going through, you are definitely not. It's my feel-good worthy show. Anxiety every show because you
Welcome well. back to it. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso Live right here on SABC3. We are learning, we are exploring, and we're traveling on this journey together of life and navigating some of the challenges that we are faced with on a daily basis. And mental health is one of them. It's a big one that's been in the spotlight the last couple of years, uh, particularly in South Africa. It's very important for us to learn and for our family members to be able to have these conversations with us. And we've got Bevan right. here who was diagnosed with depression and found a, a form of healing in dance and in movement. And of course, Dr. Uh, Williams is also here, who's also been really just giving us those very medical perspectives on the condition of uh, depression. But Bevan, while we have you here, what lifestyle changes did you have to make when you were diagnosed with uh, depression? Uh, many, <laughs> many, many, many. Uh, I think one uh, key thing was actually bringing some structure and order to my day that included regular, going to bed at regular times mm. and waking up regularly, mm. uh, having regular meals. And I think the, the, someone covered the nutrition aspect. Yeah. That was definitely part of it. And then uh, just developing self-awareness and the ability to reflect on my life and being able to be aware of my thoughts, mm. pay a little bit more attention to what's going through, <laughs> yeah, mindfulness, mm -hmm. uh, being able to notice and label my emotions which we aren't all taught. Yeah. <laughs> we, escape from them. No. Unfortunately, EQ is not a, a focus <laughs> in growing up in the yes, world. Yes, and now, ideally, yeah. if we were able to label them, we already lo lose some of the charge and we have a little bit more power mm -hmm. in managing them or not necessarily transforming them, but just being with them in a, in a more kind of comfortable way. Yeah, uh, yeah so constant, constant work, really. I often yeah. say dealing with depression uh, is like another job. There's but another job going on in the background. And self that's service. It's, yeah, yeah, but it's also self care. It's, it's I care. I was, I was going to, I, I mean, we, I was maybe picking that up, <laughs> up from the, the subtext there. It's about caring for yourself enough, which is it's quite a thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, we often put ourselves as a second priority to everything else, the situation that we're caught up in. I'm going to ask this both to you from your, your both of your perspectives. Mm. Is depression curable or is it only manageable? Mm. Well, certainly in my experience and from the literature, the, the vast majority of people, you know, we are able to manage it and, and treat it. The literature speaks about at least 80% of people. That's certainly my experience as a psychiatrist of the last over a decade. Uh, but there are some people that we struggle with, you know. Um, but it's important that when we, when we come up with a treatment package that it's holistic mm. and it's tailor-made to that particular person, mm. you know. Yeah. And the, so there's not just medications and so forth. Dance, for instance, I'm listening to you talk, there's lots of research looking at the effect of exercise. Mm. And um, there's a chemical in the brain called brain-derived mm. neurotrophic factor. Mm. That is decreased in depression. Mm. Things like dance and exercise will increase that. Mm. Mm. You know, music therapy has been documented mm. since before the West, you know, in the Middle East. It was used as a treatment for psychiatric illnesses. And uh, we, we had a biodancer um, program at, at the unit mm. that I ran and it was really successful. People mm. really loved it. So it's a holistic kind of approach. Dr. Mm. Williams, I like you mentioned treatment packages. What sort of treatment options are available for someone suffering with depression? Well, firstly, mild, if, uh, m we only start antidepressant medications when it's moderate to severe. Mm. I d we don't reach for that in mild depression. Mild depression, you know, you, you want to uh, ask the person to access their, their support systems, exercise, their diet. Mm. Um, you know, maybe they need some spiritual counseling, uh, maybe they're in some financial issues, maybe they need a disability grant, mm. you know, so we don't reach for the antidepressants immediately. Okay. Yeah, um, but then there are other treatments as well, yeah. you know. Guys, I wish we, we had an entire yeah. you know, show to talk about this. Bevan, thank you so much for, yeah. for um, being a part of this conversation, thank brave you. enough to kind of mm. shout this out there because mm. I know a lot of other people are relating. Super yes. important to talk about it. No, yeah. We've got to get rid of the stigma. Ah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, we, we've been able to speak very openly mm. about our own individual experiences yeah. in the space, in the spectrum of depression and anxiety and the, mm. the so-called disorders. Again, most importantly, please, if you need help, if you need to talk to someone 24 hours a day, this line is open 0800 456 789. There is someone waiting to take your call. Mm.